there's something else I notice when the 49ers are a national story. And um, I get a lot of flack for this, and I, and that's fine. But I, I also know some, like, when is emotion driving the bus? And so um, to the point that we sort of started the show with, do you sort of trust the 49ers to handle this? The 49ers, like every other team and all the individuals in their working, none of them are perfect. Should Kyle Shanahan have, have, have run the ball? Sure, fine, whatever, whatever. We can micromanage if we want. But the larger question, do you trust the 49ers to handle this? Good God, yes. And I wonder if Niner fans, those of us with our emotional strings attached, attached do you notice this? When the 49ers have a national story, listen to the way people talk about them. Emmanuel Acho, not on Stein and Goo yesterday, but on his national show, said that Kyle Shanahan, at all points, will not rebuild. He will reload. This is sustainable. They are going to be good all the time. Don't worry about this Brock Purdy contract. They will continue to be good because the system of both drafting and play calling and mixing it all in together, it works. It's been working, it's working now, and it will continue to work. Listen to Michael Lombardi, who used to run NFL franchises. Listen to the way he talks about the Niners dealing with with situations like this, this is from the Pat McAfee Show ESPN. It's called alignment, right? When you're aligned as an organization, then there's nothing from the outside can really affect you because they can't get to your owner. They can't get to your vice president or president. Everything is kind of aligned. Everybody understands what we're doing. It's not on the same page. That's ridiculous. Everybody's on the same page. Today in 32 cities, everybody's on the same page, but not all the teams are aligned. Alignment creates the belief that the noise on the outside will never affect us. This is what we're doing. This is how we have to approach it. This is what we believe in. And I think the 49ers are perfectly aligned to handle that situation. So the, the point that we were talking about earlier, and Grandy, I know this is what you were getting at, and I believe this, the Niners, just those execs, oh, they're chilling. They're t- I don't think that this is bothering them in the slightest. Because they're aligned from, you know, Jed York, who has told John Lynch, hey, you know, whatever you need to go out there and do what you need to do to win, I got you. And Prague Marate running the numbers. Yeah, John, this is what we can do. This is how we see it. This is what we're going to go with. And John to Kyle, Kyle, what do you think? Well, we want Brandon, but we also want to make sure that we are able to do everything else we need to do. So... Yeah, if that's the number that Parag says, and John and Kyle, we both like the player, then that's what we're going to go with. And then you go to Brandon Ayuk and his agent, and you say, you know, this is what we're thinking, and if he wants more than what you are willing to pay, well, then you go to plan B if that's what you have to do. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think that they love when a player tries to sort of drag them through the mud, which I think in moments, it's not been bad. There have been moments where I do think Brandon has decided – I'm going to speak for the organization. Yeah, Jay they, they, they just me. called me and said they don't want me. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. And so does that annoy them? Sure. I bet it annoys them. But I also think that what Mike Lombardi is saying right here is true, which is that they're like, the only thing you're really doing if you're going on TikTok to try to negotiate, you're trying to create a fervor. You're trying to get the public on your side. The Niners don't care. Yeah. Parag Marathi does not care what we think they should do with Brandon Ayuk. They ran all of these permutations well before they happened. What if Brandon won't sign? What if he will? What if he holds out? What if he doesn't? What if he skips eight games? What if he never shows up? What if the Steelers offer a one and a two? What if the Steelers want Debo? What if the commanders, they've run all of that, and they ran all of that months ago. Before the draft. Yes. Which is what makes me think about the draft, and you know the way you're laying it out, and hearing Michael Lombardi, who is really smart, and he's been in front offices, and he's been around football for a long time, and I go back to the draft, and I think about 
what they did in the first round. They drafted a wide receiver. So you want to talk about permutations, and now we all thought, oh, Debo Samuel. They're going to cut Debo at the end of next year. They drafted a guy in the first round, Ricky Pearsall. So that's going to be it for Debo. Well, the more you think about where we are now in July, and Brandon is unsigned, maybe this was a Brandon Ayuk insurance policy. Maybe it was for both of them. And I can't help but think about the Green Bay situation and the seven picks they've made over the last two years at tight end and at wide receiver. And I think about Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch and Parag Marate in the financial office. And you're wondering about how much you're going to have to pay Brock. And if Brock has another monster year, if he goes to the Super Bowl again oh. and he's top five in the MVP, you might have to pay him $55 million a year. You might have to pay him 60. You might have to pay him, you might 60. Have to pay him 60. Whatever that number is. It gets bigger the better he plays, and the bigger that number gets, the harder it is to pay Debo 28 and Brandon 27. Well, uh, okay. And they knew that, and so the permutations part is, let's start drafting receivers. Absolutely. And, and, and so two things. One, this is why it is so stupid when you hear people after the draft go, that was a reach. It's the stupidest thing that people say in sports. Well, I like the player, Mark. Yeah, that, that's a reach. What does that mean? You don't know what we're doing outside. You don't know what we're doing. We are executing a plan. And, and, and fans, every fan, I hope the Niner fans, I hope you like take this to heart. Every fan of every team thinks their team's an idiot at drafting. But do you know what I heard nationally? Do you want to know why Acho thinks the Niners system is so incredibly sustainable? You want to know what he said yesterday? He goes, you want to know why the 49ers are in such great shape? Because they draft their butts off. Look at their roster. And I guarantee you fans are out here. But, 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 Solomon Thomas. Okay. Okay. Hell, Trey Lance. Javon Kinlaw. Look at their roster. He goes, Kittle, fifth round. Warner, third round. Hufanga, fifth round. Greenlaw, what was he? Third or fourth round? Fifth round. I can't even remember for crying out loud. Fifth round, Brock yeah. Purdy, seventh round. There are absolute stars dotting this roster. That the 49ers found on day two and three. And that that is the cheat code. Can you can you do that every year? You'd think no, but guess what? They do. They do. They have repeatedly. Nobody hits on all their picks. There's always misses. But the 49ers need more acknowledgement than what they have received in recent years for what they've been able to do in the draft. They are there are so many guys who are making north of 80 million dollar contracts who they found in round 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. They're all over the roster. Yeah, the problem is rounds 1 and 2. Okay. More often than not. No, not I mean, more I, often than not, I'd say. I well, mean, I mean you, like Debo, Nick Bosa, you know, I Trey mean, Lance, okay. Javon Kinlaw. Yeah. I mean, Drake yeah, Jackson, Brent, the jury's still out. Brandon Ayuk. Yeah. I mean, l- l- sure. You're, there's we can go tit for tat. There's but, all, right, but and I Solomon would, Thomas, their first ever pick. Yes. Yeah. A bust. Totally. Sure. Totally. But I think they've done better later, day two, day three, than they have yeah. on day one. You're going to miss. Yeah. You're going to miss. Everybody misses. Well, and hopefully they didn't miss with Ricky Pearsall. And if they did hit on Ricky Pearsall and he comes in and has a decent year this year, 40 catches, whatever, off the bench or you know, spelling uh, Debo and spelling Brandon Ayuk, whatever he can do, if he shows that he can be a legitimate real one, then it becomes like you're talking about wide receiver survivor. Uh, no doubt. And then what I also think the Niners are, are aware of and, and, and executing in this particular case is something that there's no way for the rest of us to ever really acknowledge. And I think it's a good thing that we don't acknowledge it because we want to stay in the moment. Like we're here. We're here. It is July 18th. And I hope for each and every one of you right now that there are text threads being shared, planning your draft trip. That's where we are. You're starting to think about websites that start with the word Roto. You're starting to think about going back to those. Camp is about to open. You want to find that 10th round gem. 
that rookie running back that nobody knows about, that the coach really loves, you know what I mean? Your Isaiah Pacheco or whatever, whatever. So that's where we are right now. But what the 49ers know is prior to Brock Purdy's extension that needs to be signed and prior to anything that needs to needs to be figured out between Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, do you know how long that is? Do you know how many how many games need to be played? Do you know how much can happen? I will never for the rest of my life forget the moment. I sat here with you. We were in, I don't think we were in this room yet. I think we were still in the old room, but we were doing our show. We were doing our show, and the whole world had gotten ready for the NFL season, and drafts had happened for fantasy and, and picks and bets, and everyone had their predictions, and we were ready to rock, and we sat here together in the middle of the show, and the First game of the NFL season started, and the Bills were playing the Jets, and and they kicked off, and then three plays later, everything changed. The whole landscape of the AFC changed. One of the top five favorites in the conference suddenly had no quarterback. Well, they had a quarterback. No, they didn't. Kind of. <laughs> they don't now. I, I mean... Zachy Poo. So do you, like, just what's going to happen between now and next February? I don't know. A billion things right. that could change everything that we're talking about. And what's going to happen between now and early September when the season actually starts, especially as it pertains to Brandon Ayuk? Does he sign? Does he not sign? Does he hold out? Does he just play on his fifth-year option and show up and be disgruntled? Is he happy? There are so many things over the next five days that will happen, I think, before the Niners actually get their full team to report and they head down to Santa Clara. So I'm, I'm fascinated to see how this next week goes. Uh, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, an Odyssey sports station, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal. Credit union for a low-rate auto loan. Apply online or just ask for First NorCal Financing at the dealer. Yeah, this next week, the one after that, like we're going to continue to get all kinds of information. And and so the larger point on Brandon is exactly not even just what Grandy said earlier, but yes, what Andrew Brandt said on Twitter yesterday. Brandon Ayuk, I want to trade. 49ers, that's cute. We'll see you in August. Right. I mean, every single sourced report I want you to you know forget about the national debate shows. Go to your Barrows, your Jennifer Lee Chans, your Maddie Mayokos, your Lombardis. They all said the exact same thing yesterday. And believe you, they're not just they're not just making it up. They're talking to people. And and every one of them has said, I see no scenario, no scenario where the 49ers trade Brandon Ayuk. Well, the scenario was three months ago. And it was going Correct. into the draft, and we Correct. talked about it. I actually thought that they would uh, they would trade him. And you and I, I think, did it all the way up to the first round of the draft. And you said, all right, Dibs, make a call, make a prediction. Will they or won't they? might have been during the crossover with Steiny and Goo. And I said, I think they're going to trade Brandon Ayuk. And I, I thought, yeah, I, I locked it up, unfortunately. And that thing got unlocked Damn. some days later. Too bad. You hate being wrong, although uh, these guys love when I'm wrong because they go against me. You should like being wrong. I actually, I love being it's wrong. It's much more memorable than being right. And